The story is set in the year 1542, during the Ming Dynasty. We are in the Ming Dynasty capital of Beijing, inside the emperor and the royal family's residence in the Forbidden City. It is currently 6am on a cold November morning. The sun hasn't come up yet and it is still dark. The Forbidden City is quiet. Everyone's still in bed, except the guards, the eunuchs, and the palace maids that are on night duty. The emperor himself is also asleep. His name is Zhu Hou Cong, and he's a descendant of Zhu Yuan Zhang, the beggar who became the first emperor of the Ming Dynasty, and he was a focus in episode 3. Zhu Hou Cong, however, is more famously known in Chinese history as the Jia Jing Emperor. Jia Jing spelt J I A J I N G. The Jia Jing Emperor is sleeping in the quarters of his favorite wife. Consort Duan, Duan spelt D U A N. The Jia Jing Emperor loves Consort Duan to bits, and he's always filled with excitement whenever he gets to spend the night with her. At this point of time, however, Consort Duan is not in her room, having gone out to collect rainwater, more on that later, which means only the Emperor is in the room at the moment. The whole room is silent, save for the snoring sounds of the Emperor. But then, all of that is suddenly interrupted when the door to the room opens slightly, making a low creaking noise. A palace maid sneaks quietly into the room. Then another maid sneaks into the room. Then another, until 15 palace maids or young girls are inside the sleeping quarters. They are relieved that the emperor is still sound asleep and hasn't heard them sneak in. The 15 girls then tiptoe silently towards the emperor, and that's when we see that one of the palace maids is carrying a long, thick rope tied into the shape of a noose. G'day everyone, I'm your host Stephen, and welcome to another episode of the Bamboo History Podcast. For those of you who are new, welcome. The Bamboo History Podcast is a podcast that focuses on Chinese and East Asian history. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to my podcast to keep up to date with my latest episodes and to also tune in to my existing ones. I also have an Instagram too, at Bamboo History Podcast, which features visual content for my episodes, teasers, and extra historical content that aren't podcast episodes. Please follow my Instagram too. Thanks. To all my existing listeners, thanks again for your continued support. All right. Now let's get straight into it. Now, you're all wondering what's going to happen next with those palace maids that have snuck into the bedroom that the emperor is sleeping in. Well, let's continue that story then, shall we? The 15 palace maids have now crept up to the bed where the emperor is sleeping and they surround the bed on all sides. The leader of the group, a girl named Yang Jinying, spelt Y-A-N-G-J-I-N, Y-I-N-G, is holding the rope that's tied into a noose and moves to the end of the bed. She is shaking with nervousness, and more so when she's directly looking down onto the emperor's face. The emperor is still fast asleep, his chest rising and falling steadily as he breathes peacefully in his sleep, oblivious to what is happening around him. I wonder what he's dreaming of. Maybe he's dreaming about wanting to be featured in a Bamboo History podcast episode. Yang Jingying quickly glances around to the other girls, and they all nod in unison. Yang Jingying then takes a deep breath, (sighs) then slowly lowers the rope down onto the emperor until the noose is around the emperor's neck. La! Yang Jingying pulls hard, and the sudden force of the rope smashing into his neck jerks the Jia Jing emperor wide awake. Pulled out of whatever great dream he was in, the emperor is woken with a mix of pain, shock and confusion, and before he can even react, one of the girls jumps onto his body and presses him down, while two others grab him by the legs and another two grab him by the arms. What kind of messed up party trick is this, the emperor thought. Actually, that's what I wish he was thinking. But he was too caught up being strangled by a group of girls that his only instinct was to survive and get himself out of this tangle. 
The emperor grasped both of his hands as he tried to free himself from the noose, whilst at the same time struggling against the girls who had his body and limbs pinned down. As the emperor is struggling, Yang Jingying tries to tighten the noose around the emperor's neck in order to strangle him. But for some reason, the noose just wouldn't tighten. The other girls try to take over to tighten the noose as well, but it's not working for them either. The girls are now getting worried and start panicking, as they know time is of the essence, and the longer it takes to kill the emperor, the more likely they would be discovered and be caught. So whilst some of them are trying their best to strangle the emperor, a couple of others take out their hairpins and begin stabbing the emperor repeatedly all over the body. Just bloody die, the girls all probably thought as they attacked the emperor in a chaotic frenzy. But the emperor didn't die. He was struggling, clinging onto any remaining energy and will to survive. Panic turned into confusion and doubt as the girls began to wonder. Was the emperor really the son of heaven and not just a mere mortal? Perhaps he just couldn't die. As the doubt set in, the youngest of the group of girls, Zhang Jinlian, spelt Z-H-A-N-G-J-I-N-L-I-A-N, gets cold feet and bolts out of the room and runs to the living quarters of the empress Fang, Fang spelt F-A-N-G. The young Zhang Jinlian bursts into the empress's quarters and yells, Empress! Empress! Huang Hou! Sha Ren Le! They're trying to kill the emperor! Empress Fang hurriedly leads a group of eunuchs to consort Duan's quarters, where the group of eunuchs rush up and wrestle the girls away from the emperor. Empress Fang herself unties the noose from the emperor's neck and tries to wake the emperor up, because by this time, the emperor has passed out. However, miraculously, he's still alive. It turns out what saves the emperor is the fact that the noose was tied with a dead knot, meaning the girls weren't able to pull the rope through the knot to tighten the rope around the emperor's neck to strangle him. This event is known in Chinese as the Ren Yin Gong Bian, or in English, the palace plot of the Ren Yin Yi, and has been the only instance in Chinese history where a group of palace mates attempted to assassinate the emperor of China. The Jia Jing Emperor had been attacked by the girls and miraculously survived. But it took almost six hours of emergency treatment by the palace doctors to wake him up. Even though he survived, the girls' attempt to strangle him had damaged his windpipe, and for a long time after the incident, he was unable to speak. Because of this, Empress Feng took the lead in investigating the assassination attempt to figure out who was behind the plot to kill the emperor. The leader of the girls, Yang Jinying, was questioned by the empress, and Yang Jinying told her that it was consort Ning, Ning spelt N-I-N-G, that ordered them to attack the emperor. When the empress brought the consort Ning to be questioned, consort Ning denied being a part of the plot and insisted that the person behind everything was consort Duan. If you remember, consort Duan's living quarters was where the emperor had been staying, on the night the palace maids attacked. So it does make sense that Consort Duan had arranged for the Emperor to stay at her palace that night, meaning she had the knowledge and surveillance of the Emperor the entire night, and then be able to order the palace mates to come in to kill the Emperor when the time was right. Consort Duan, however, also denied that she had anything to do with the attempted assassination and fiercely defended herself, even when she was placed in a torture chamber and was, well, tortured. Eventually, Empress Fang determined that both Consort Ning and Consort Duan were both involved with the assassination and they, along with the 15 palace girls, were sentenced to death and were executed using the Ling Chi method. Ling Chi spelt L-I-N-G-C-H-I. Even the young Zhang Jinlian, the frightened Zhang Jinlian, who reported the attack to the Empress, was also executed. <sighs> Poor girl. If you don't know what Ling Chi is, it is the slow slicing of a human's body, where the human body is slowly sliced up by a knife a thousand times until the person dies from blood loss. This punishment is also known as death by a thousand cuts, and in my opinion, and most listeners can probably agree with me, the worst way someone can die. <sighs> what a horrible way for the two consorts and the 15 palace mates to go. Thus, the case was closed, but lingering questions remained. 
How did a group of young girls get the nerve to try and kill the emperor? Why did they try to kill the emperor? And who was responsible for the assassination? Was it Consort Ning? Or Consort Duan? Or just the palace girls themselves? Or someone else entirely? To try and solve this mystery, we need to talk about the victim, the Jia Jing Emperor. The Jia Jing Emperor ascended the throne in the year 1521, and was the 12th Emperor of the Ming Dynasty. The Jia Jing Emperor is perhaps most famously, or infamously known, as a Taoist Emperor, because he was more interested in Taoist pursuits than being an Emperor. He would often hide away in his living quarters in the Forbidden City, engaging in alchemy rather than focusing on government affairs and, you know, ruling the country in general. The Jia Jing Emperor was so obsessed with Taoism that he would appear in front of his people in Taoist robes rather than in the Emperor's clothing. His Taoist <clears throat> hobby would cost almost 200,000 taels of silver a year. That's almost 8,000 kilograms, or around 266,000 ounces of silver. That's a lot of money spent by the country just to fund one person's hobby in alchemy. Now, why was he so obsessed with Taoism? Because he witnessed Taoist priests perform <coughs> cough, cough, <coughs> miracles, which made him believe that what they did was real. For example, miracles like making the sky rain and treating his son of smallpox. The Taoist priest that killed his son of smallpox was named Tao Zhongwen, spelt T-A-O-Z-H-O-N-G-W-E-N. The Jia Jing Emperor was so impressed that he asked Tao Zhongwen on advice to achieve immortality using alchemy. Remember episode 22, where the Taoist priests used alchemy to try and create an elixir of immortality, but ended up creating gunpowder? Yeah, I think in this scenario, it probably won't work too well here either. Tao Zhongwen advised the emperor that one of the ingredients to make the elixir of immortality was the period blood from young virgin girls. Hmm. Hmm. How would I best find young virgin girls, the emperor thought. Aha! I know. Yep, you all guessed it. The palace maids in his own home. As a result, the emperor rounded up young female palace girls mostly around the ages of 13 and 14, when they had just hit puberty and would take their period blood to use for the creation of the elixir of immortality. In a bid to get as much period blood from the girls as possible, they were forced to fast and drink only rainwater in order to make them bleed faster and in higher quantities. Sometimes, they were also given medication to ensure they bled more as well, and there were cases where young girls would bleed to death from the medicine they took. Girls that weren't harvested for period blood were sent to collect rainwater, and even his own wives would help him collect rainwater. Case in point, being consort Duan, who would collect rainwater for him every morning. When I read about this part, I was disgusted. Like, ugh, what the hell, it's just bloody messed up, no pun intended, and reminds me of the episode I did on foot binding. Ugh, makes me sick on how these girls were treated. The Jia Jing Emperor's harsh treatment of the girls has been speculated as the reason the palace maids decided to attack the emperor. Seeing how harshly the girls getting their blood harvested were being treated, the others decided that instead of waiting around to be rounded up to be harvested, they decided to strike first. Based on this logic, it could be possible that neither Consort Ning or Consort Duan was involved in this attack, and that the palace girls had planned it amongst themselves. However, there are a couple of things that can sow doubt to this claim. Firstly, it's hard to imagine how a group of palace girls, the lowest group of people in the food chain of the Forbidden City, could calculate such an elaborate plan and have the courage to try and assassinate the Emperor without a powerful figure supporting them. Secondly, the girls that were being harvested for period blood were in their teens, around 13 to 14 years old whereas some of the girls involved in the attack were over the age of 20, the oldest being close to 30 years old. It is clear then that the girls who attacked the emperor were most likely a different group of girls that weren't affected by the period blood harvesting and thus were not motivated by it to attack. This brings me to the second possibility, 
and the one, in my opinion, is more likely to have been what happened. In the year 1542, the same year as the attack, one of the emperor's ministers gifted him a <clears throat> special turtle. The turtle was special because it was dyed in five different colours. The Jia Jing emperor was fascinated by this turtle. This was because a. Turtles symbolised longevity and long life, and b. This particular turtle was dyed in five colours, a rainbow turtle, which the emperor had never seen before. Because of what I just mentioned, the emperor declared this five-coloured longevity turtle a god, and ordered a group of palace mates to look after it. Because the turtle was a god, he added that if the turtle wasn't properly taken care of, the maids would be severely punished. Guess who was assigned to look after the turtle? Yang Jin Ying. That name familiar? Well, she was the one early in the story that tried to strangle the emperor with the rope. Yep, Yang Jin Ying and ten or so palace maids, the ones part of the attack, were assigned to take care of this turtle. Now, call me crazy, but I think this so-called longevity turtle dyed in five colours is a load of horse poo. I reckon what happened was, his minister found some random turtle in a pond, got some Dulux paint and painted five colours onto this turtle. Then he made up some BS to the emperor saying it was, oh, it was a rare t- it's a rare turtle, you should make it a god and blah 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 yada yada yada. And I do believe the colours on the turtle was painted on, because when the palace girls placed the turtle into the water tank, the water washed the dye off. Then the dye dissipated into the water and polluted it. The polluted water then poisoned the turtle, and it died. So you can say the turtle that was died, died. <laughs> Do you get that? So when the turtle died, that was the moment Yang Jingying and the other palace girls knew they were screwed. If the emperor had found out that they had accidentally killed the turtle, then they a thousand percent would have been executed. Yang Jingying and the other girls were in a panic and had no clue what to do, so they went to consort Ning for advice. And by the way, how did these girls know the consort Ning? Well, they had all met whilst collecting rainwater for the emperor, you know, for the period blood harvesting. Consort Ning was originally the emperor's favourite wife. However, when the consort Duan showed up, the emperor cast aside Consort Ning and was like, nah, not good enough, and Consort Duan became his favourite wife. This made Consort Ning jealous of Consort Duan, and she bloody hated her guts. So when the girls came to her looking for advice, she felt as if there was an opportunity to finally take revenge on Consort Duan. Consort Ning told them that there was no point owning up to the mistake or even trying to escape because either result would mean certain death. The consort convinced the girls that instead of waiting to die, that they strike first and kill the emperor. The girls, backed against the wall with no other option, decided to kill the emperor. Consort Ning planned the entire operation, telling the girls to attack the emperor on the day he was staying with Consort Duan, because she wanted to frame the Consort Duan for the attack and because Consort Duan would also get up early in the morning every day to collect rainwater. That left the Emperor all alone in her living quarters, making it a perfect opportunity for the girls to strike. The only thing Consort Ning didn't account for was that the people attacking the Emperor were a group of young girls. Yes, even the one that was 30 years old, because come on, 30 is the new 20. These young girls had never killed anyone in their lives, and their first assignment was to kill the Emperor of China. Faced with inexperience, fear and nerves, they totally messed up their attempt at killing the Jia Jing Emperor. And yeah, you could say the mission was a EPIC FAIL. I believe this scenario would have made more sense because it was unlikely a group of palace maids, i.e. the lowest ranking people in the palace, would have dared attack the Emperor on their own and they must have been directed and encouraged to do so. There were also motivating factors, such as Consort Ning's hate for Consort Duan and the palace maid's accidental killing of the turtle. In the end, I believe it's safe to say that Consort Duan had no clue what was going on and died an unjust death. Dying by slow slicing is painful, 
but dying, knowing the fact that you had nothing to do with anything, only adds to the pain. Whilst the judging emperor was fine with the rest of the people being executed, he firmly believed that the consort Duan was innocent and was saddened by her loss, condemning the Empress Feng for sentencing her to death. As fate would have it, five years after this event, a fire started in Empress Feng's quarters. The eunuchs and the other palace servants got out the water buckets and ran to extinguish the fire, but the judging emperor stopped all of them, saying, Whatever happens, happens. Because no one went to extinguish the fire, Empress Feng died. And when she died, the emperor commented, She saved me five years ago, but today, I could not save her. Whilst the judging emperor did not say why he let the empress's place burn, everyone knew that it was his way of taking revenge on his beloved consort Duan because the empress had sentenced her to death. So yeah, that's it. That's the end of the story of how a group of young palace girls tried to assassinate the emperor of China in his sleep. The takeaway for this episode is that no matter what your status is in society, even if you're the leader, always be respectful to other human beings and not say, for example, harvest their period blood, because everyone has a limit, and once that limit is pushed, they will do anything they can to survive, or to seek vengeance. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to subscribe to my podcast if you enjoy this type of content. Also, remember to follow my Instagram too, at Bamboo History Podcast, for visual content, teasers, and extra historical content that aren't podcast episodes. Okay, I've got to go now. Maybe in your own time, just reflect a bit, or perhaps have a minute's silence for Consort Duan, the person who was innocent in this entire thing and died a horrible death. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening. And I'll see you all next time on the Bamboo History Podcast. Bye for now.